So now let's talk about adding video to your website. Anytime, any website you go to, you may want to add video. There may be things you want to share with your customers or maybe information that you want to share, things that you can't quite, you know, communicate in another, another medium. Video may allow you to do that. So video in and of itself is, is a good thing to obviously be able to add to your website and many times you want to be able to do that. And also audio as well. So how do you do that? If you want to add some type of audio, maybe you're a musician or you have a podcast or you have your own music and you want to be able to share that, what are some things you can do? And that's what we're going to talk about now. Before we get into anything else, we're going to talk first about the easiest way, the simplest way to add video to your website. And that's with the iframe element. Now the iframe element is actually an element that allows you to display another web page, actually another web page inside your website. So with that being said, you know, you have, when you use an iframe element, this very same manner you do things like in the manner in which we have the image elements or whether we've used other elements, you have to tell the browser the source of the video, where you can find the video. And then there are other attributes that you'll use in addition to source, not just source, but also the width of the video, how wide do you want it to be, the height, you know, how much height do you want it to take up in, in, your, in your website, how does all that look? So those are the things that you can provide the value, the information to the browser, more information to the browser around doing that. And so essentially, this iframe element, as I mentioned, has a width attribute, maybe a value there. You can add height, if you will, value, and the source URL, the source for wherever that video or whatever it is you're displaying on your website with this element. So one way to do it, one easy way to do that, if you've gone to websites like uh, YouTube or video sharing websites, a lot of times you'll see with a video, you'll see the word share, and you'll find, you'll be able to find the iframe code already laid out for you and, it, and it'll have in it the you can see the closing part it'll have the url a width set then you can change the value for the width has height and you can change the value for that and even the source and i'll just click on it to kind of show you that it does actually work you can actually see that it actually loads um, it, it works similar to that but you can actually put this and use this content and this code that's already provided for you in order to be able to add, add it to your website to add that video to your website and this is a, an example of a video that I, that I created so it has the end the closing part of the iframe element the beginning part and within that opening tag you have the, all this content that shows you the source the height and the width and so forth and so that allows you to do that now, what about audio? When it comes to audio, what do we think when it comes to audio? Well, when it comes to audio, as you might expect, there's an audio element. And a very, the same kind of format and, and, and logic goes behind that. You have to tell the, the browser where to find the audio. So what's the source of the audio, the audio? What's the file name or path, let's say SRC? And then with the audio element, you also have something called controls. Each browser has a default set of controls that will automatically show up on the screen. And it's based on the browser that you're using or that your user is using. And that you can't really, you don't have much opportunity to change what those controls look like, but they allow the, the, the person, the user to play it, to fast forward, to that type of stop the audio. And so that comes automatically with, with each browser, browser and there are default controls for that. Now we can play around when we get the CSS and style the whole block element, if you will, and play around with some techniques, but the controls themselves you do need to have, but you can't really do much with changing the way they look because they come by default with the browser. They come with the browser. So let's say, for example, if I had an audio file that was called sit.mp3 sit and it was in a folder that I created called media. All I would need to do is to put the media, because that was the name of the folder, um, slash, and this is very similar to what we did with the images um, uh, exercise and chapter, where we had a folder with the folder's name, slash, and then the name of the file. So there would be folder media slash sit.mp3. And that would go in the source. Then we have controls, and we have the opening part and the closing part. That's how you would do audio. Now, it's a very similar technique. It's very much the same if you, you're using video, and this is when you have an actual file. So when you want to use video, it's the same concept. If you have a video file, not something that you're linking to, but a file that you actually have um, in your folder and your files for your website, use the video element. And you, same thing, you would put controls, you have a source for the file name or path, width and height, and then you close that video and you'll be able to see it in that way, you'll be able to show the video. So now we're going to take a look at how we can actually do this on our website, and we're going to go ahead and add some video to our website.